Hello and welcome to the Fit and Free podcast. This is a podcast for women who want it all, to feel strong and confident in their bodies, as well as enjoying a sneaky mug on a Friday night. I'm an exercise physiologist and sports nutritionist here to teach you how to achieve your body goals without food and your body controlling your life. So let's jump in. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another ep of the Fit and Free Potty. I've got such a good episode for you guys, and I'm so excited to dive into it because I experienced this for a good, you know, between the age of, I would say, 16, probably, to the age of 26, and it used to control my life. But before we get into the episode, I wanted to give you a bit of a life update um, because, oh my God, things have been going on at the moment. Um, if you're not aware with my journey, I had hypothalamic amenorrhea and what that means is um, I didn't have my period basically because I was under eating and over exercising. I wasn't giving my body enough carbohydrates and a fat, especially for the amount of exercise that I was doing. So between the age of like 22 to 26, my period was so irregular. Sometimes it would go for, you know, three months. Sometimes it would be like, there was even a point where it was like gone for a year straight. And at the time I didn't realize the negative impact that it was actually has on your body because not having a period, of course, it's not just the period side of stuff. It's like, you know, the hormones, estrogen, progesterone, like they play other roles in the body. So if you don't have, you know, enough of those hormones because your period has shut down, it affects other parts of your body, like your bone health, for example, estrogen plays a big role in the bone remodeling process. So it's really, really important that we have enough estrogen because otherwise you are at risk of, you know, low bone mineral density and like run into run into issues, especially as you get older. And that's how you can develop like osteoporosis. So it's not just you know, and this is what I'm such an advocate for. It's like, yes, I'm so passionate about helping women change their body composition, but I'm also really passionate about women having optimal health. <laughs> anyway, so the reason why I tell you that is because ever since then, like I got my period back when I was about 26, 27, and I'm 30 now. So I've had a regular period for, you know, three years. However, since getting it back, sometimes it can be really sensitive to certain things. And this cycle in particular, it was pretty rough. So if anyone else has irregular cycles, they can probably relate to the hormone shifts and changes that you get like from, you know, day 28 to when it finally comes. It's like, I don't know if anyone else experiences this, but like my mental health significantly declines. I get hella anxious. I get really, really like overwhelmed and I can always really tell that it's a hormonal thing because it, you know, it only really happens like that bad. Um, especially at the end stage. It's like, it only happens when my period is late um, and um, and it's hard. It, it's so hard. I like to explain it like sometimes you feel like you're in the bottom of a well and you're like trying so much to like creep out of it. And it's like, you're trying to fill up your cup. You're trying to go to the gym. You're trying to journal. You're trying to do everything that makes you feel good on a normal day. But during this specific time of a late period, it's rough. It is so rough. So if anyone else is experiencing anything like that, please let me know because I freaking feel you and it's, and it's extremely hard. So that happened. Oh my God. I'm so grateful. I got my period today. So if I sound a little bit like, um, I don't make sense. I'm blaming that. Um, but it came on day 42, this cycle. So the last week has been pretty rough. Um, and I was reflecting on it and I always like to reflect in on my menstrual cycle as a really good marker for my overall health. And of course, my period was irregular this month because, you know, I moved overseas, like went through the traveling process. I was sick and I had a full week of like not eating very much. So, of course, there was a lot of like stresses within my life over the last month. And then I could see that in my period. So this month, what I'm doing is really focusing in on that a little bit and I am really paying attention to it and really making sure that I'm really nourishing my body, mind and soul to make sure that, you know, it doesn't happen again because having a 40 day cycle is not a vibe and, um, you know, 
our period is like it's a really good indication of our health so what i'm going to be doing to really focusing in on that is number one fueling making sure i'm eating enough carbohydrates and enough fats making sure that i'm not pushing my body too hard and making sure i am giving myself you know permission not only mentally but physically to rest when i need it to all my ladies who also run their business like you get it like running a business is stressful and i like to say it's personal development on steroids but you know, you guys in your career and all the things, there's a lot of work stress that comes in. Then we pile on, you know, going to the gym, we then pile on X, Y, and Z. So there is a lot of, you know, stressful situations in life. So it's important. That's something I'm going to be really looking at over the next month to making sure that I'm really monitoring that and really focusing on my self-care and filling up my cup and really being kind to myself throughout this month, especially because, yeah, like I said, I really don't want to go through that again. Um, so that's my update. I also got a keratin hair treatment, so I'm super excited to see how that goes. My hair goes so frizzy in Bali from the humidity and the heat. So I went to a day spa last weekend and they put it in a keratin treatment. Apparently it's meant to keep it like frizz free for 30 washes. So I'm excited to see how that goes and hopefully that helps my hair a little bit in this like harsh the climate and also of course the water the water is terrible here so i will keep you guys updated in on that and then other than that i've just pretty much been eating a lot <laughs> i'm like guys i've been eating out every single meal like yesterday i ordered in a gojek to my house and it's just so wild it like cost me eight dollars to get this beautiful full balmy roll delivered straight to my door like how good you can't beat it so i (laughs) there's a part of me that's like oh you should cook but i'm just like i'm loving the convenience and like why not so um (laughs) this is your daily reminder is that you absolutely can eat out and not gain weight i have been doing it now solid for (laughs) two weeks um and i definitely haven't gained any weight at all so it's all about you know understanding nutrition as a whole and then also you know like i always talk about is having a healthy relationship with food so um that's been amazing now i just wanted to take a little break and read out one of the podcast reviews you guys you have no idea how much it means to me when you guys write me amazing messages like this like it really you know lights me up and like it's the reason why i keep showing up it's the reason why i keep putting out this content for you guys because i really want to help you i want to educate you and i really want you guys all to have you know be confident in your bodies with this amazing relationship with food so this podcast has been an eye opener all over social media people push the idea of calorie deficits eat less and you'll get there it's something that you've helped me realize isn't part of my goal i'm so excited to start my proper fitness journey with the help of your podcast like guys i love that you have no idea so um i love all your little love notes if you are um regular listener i would love it if you could write a little review as well because i love to read them and i love to see them and like always it's a little bit of a value exchange because the more reviews we get that's just like any algorithm the more it gets pushed out to other people so i would really really appreciate it if you guys could take the time to do that for me now let's jump into today's episode so today's episode is all about food noise why the food noise in your head just won't stop and like i said from the age of like 16 to you know 26 is food literally controlled my life it's all i talked about it's so crazy to think back and it's just like you know from the outside people would be like oh you're so healthy you're saying no to that oh my god you're so disciplined you're going to the gym every single day and but like at the other side of it it's because like it wasn't because i was healthy and it wasn't because i was so disciplined it was because i freaking hated myself so much that i was so controlling in on my food so i really want to open up the conversation because like guys thinking about food and thinking about calories all the time is absolutely not normal it's common but it's not normal and it's something that so many people are feeling but they're not talking about it because they've got no idea that everyone else is actually you know struggling in the same thing and that's why i love the fit and free academy so much because like it's such a beautiful space of bringing these women together of you know all struggling and then literally realizing that 
so many women are struggling with this and it's just such a pivotal moment for them to really open the gateways for their growth because they're like holy shit like I'm not the only one feeling like this I'm not crazy like (laughs) I am not crazy and it's such a beautiful space because they're leaning on each other and they're giving each other advice and it's just so beautiful to watch and I'm so grateful that I've been able to create this space I absolutely love it and honestly I'm really so proud of it because it's like you know healing a relationship with food building muscle all the things it's like you know it's emotionally taxing and it's hard it absolutely is because like you know if it wasn't then everyone would have their results by now however that's why I am such an advocate of doing it with people and going through it together because not only do you have me as a coach you know if you're just working one-to-one with a coach but then you also have a group of women who also are supporting you through the hard times which can be really motivating and it can be really inspiring especially on the times where you feel like throwing in the towel there's been so many like the girls come in and being like what helped me in this situation what guy, what would you guys do and the, the advice is just so perfect and it's so beautiful so I'm absolutely loving this space right now so yes you guys it's absolutely so so common but absolutely not normal so that's why I really wanted to dedicate a whole podcast episode to really help you guys understand what's going on and what you guys need to do to finally fix the food noise so what the hell is food noise Food noise refers to the constant mental chatter about food. Thinking about what to eat, worrying about calories, feeling guilty about food choices, and planning meals obsessively. It's a form of preoccupation that can dominate your thoughts and interfere with your daily life. So of course, Prepping and planning your meals somewhat to a degree is of course a healthy habit, but this can quickly become extreme. Like if you're laying in bed at night obsessing about calories and tweaking everything and planning in your next day, or if you, you know, you've planned out your meals and then you've been invited to a social event and you're like, holy fuck, like I can't go because it's going to mess up my entire day. Or instead, like you put it in and then you try and tweak every single last thing in order to fit it in. I'm talking to you. If you're, you know, you're feeling really guilty, if you're eating quote unquote higher calorie foods, if you're feeling really guilty and beating yourself up, if you go over your calories, if you are not eating something, if you can't track the calories, then my ladies, I am talking to you. Because like I said, it's common, but it's not normal. And it absolutely is a sign that you have an unhealthy relationship with food. And why is having an unhealthy relationship with food? If you don't know yet, you haven't listened to all of my podcasts, you're not going to be able to fuel your body correctly. You're going to be on this constant yo-yo diet of eating too much and not eating enough. You're not going to progress in the gym. You're not going to see the results that you want in your body. And it's also going to just completely take over your life. And if you're experiencing this, I probably don't have to tell you that. So why the hell does food noise happen? Like, why do some people have it and why do some people don't? So food noise comes from diet culture and society pressures, right? Think about it. You go on TikTok, you go on Instagram Reels, everyone is talking about fat loss. Everyone is talking about a calorie deficit. Save your calories if you're going out, eat in a calorie deficit to get your dream body. What I eat in a day, I'm eating two meals a day. What I eat in a day, I'm eating 12,000 calories, right? We literally live in a society that glorifies thinness and demonizes the certain foods. So you have, you know, all of the talk about a calorie deficit, but then you also have all the talk about how this food causes cancer. This causes this. The best foods to eat to avoid this, right? And what you guys have to understand is your beliefs around food. How you think and how you feel about food is influenced by everything that you see on social media, everything you see online, everything you see on the TV, right? So it's this media and marketing that is constantly bombarding us with messages about dieting, weight loss, and clean eating, right? So then 
this is where we create these beliefs in and around i can't eat this food because it's going to cause cancer i can't have sugar because it's going to make me gain weight i can't eat after seven because the body won't digest the food right all of these things are things that we have learned so of course all of these things are going to cause us so much anxiety in and around food because then we start overthinking everything right so overall this creates an environment where food becomes a source of anxiety rather than a source of nourishment so that is the first reason why that it's happening everything we're freaking consuming 24 7 the second reason why this happens is from restrictive dieting right of course when you restrict your food your body and mind react by increasing cravings and thoughts about food like guys it's a survival mechanism your body perceives the restriction as a threat So what happens as a natural mechanism, it prompts you to think about food consistently to ensure that you seek nourishment. And that's what you guys have to realize is like when you do a calorie deficit, your body physiologically adapts. And we know that metabolic adaptation absolutely occurs, but so does our preoccupation around food. It really significantly increases. And it's a really good example of this. If you're experiencing this is if your TikTok or if your Instagram is all what I eat in a day videos, they're all recipes. You're always constantly looking at food big red flag that you are absolutely restricting yourself and then you're not eating it so ultimately there's like i like to look at restriction in two different lenses the first one is like you're restricting yourself all the freaking time and you are you know you you're not really a binge eater you are you know you're sticking to those low calories you don't overeat maybe occasionally like on the weekend when you go out for food you might lose control however you'll go straight back into you know restriction you don't really identify as a binge eater it's more of like there might be a few hiccups but like you are always restricting yourself and then we have the other side of the restriction lens which is the people who are stuck in these restriction and binges they restrict themselves hardcore trying to you know stick to these like crazy crash diets and then like two weeks later they're so unsatisfied they're fucking starving they are not seeing the results that they want and they you know something you know pushes them over the edge maybe it's something at work and all of a sudden they hit the bucket button and all of a sudden they've had a binge then you know it's the same cycle of restricting themselves maybe it goes back for a couple of days and then the same pattern happens so being really stuck in that under eating and then overeating cycle so it's both of these like always really restrict being really restrictive and then also the binge restrict cycle is absolutely the cause of why we have so much food noise the next one is emotional eating so because like for many right food is a coping mechanism for stress anxiety boredom or any other emotions and when you use food to manage your emotions it becomes a focus in your life contributing to the noise i used to struggle a lot with emotional eating um my trigger was always anger anytime i would get angry i would want to go straight to food and it took me quite a long time to actually break that pattern um I worked on it for like a while. I can't remember exactly how long, but um, especially when I was going through my real restrictive phase of like I was eating next to nothing. And so I was under fueled and then I was also emotional eating. And it was so hard because when I was restricting myself and then struggling with emotional eating, it was just like, ugh, it was so hard because like I would, you know, restrict myself. I'd be so fearful of gaining weight. And then to cope with, you know, my anger that I used to get all the time because I was so irritable because I wasn't eating enough to kill my anger I would then you know fall back onto food so it was such a vicious cycle and yeah it was like I just always want to give myself a big hug old Laura Um, but yes so emotional eating is absolutely going to be contributing to your food noise and the next and the final one is nutritional deficiencies believe it or not so Sometimes persistent food thoughts can stem from your body's need of certain nutrients. 
If your diet lacks balance, your body may signal cravings as a way to get the nutrients you need. So we can look at it this in two different lenses. Let's look at it from like an underfueling lens and then a restrictive mindset. So the first one from an underfueling lens, like if you are, you know, skipping meals or your main meals are like heaps of veggies and a protein source, like you're skipping out on really good complex carbohydrates, then you are going to be ultimately underfueled. So when you are underfueled, what happens a lot of the time is we get pretty intense sugar cravings. The body is craving energy so that comes out as sugar the other side of it if you're someone who is you know really eating clean telling yourself you're going to be good i'm not going to have any chocolate i'm not going to have any cookies i can't eat that right having the restriction mindset if you have that then of course you're going to be thinking about the foods that you're not allowing yourself to have so that's why you're thinking about food all the time is because you're telling yourself no 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 until boom you eat too much <laughs> right so this is why we have to look at both lenses it's not only we have to look at you know learning how to fuel your body properly but it's also about looking at your food noise and looking at the rules and the things that you're telling yourself and it does, it's not just foods itself it's not just like labeling food as good and bad and like you know avoiding chocolate cookies you know all the stuff that you're so afraid of losing control of but it's also about like things that we're telling ourselves things like you know i'm gonna be good this week i'm eating clean i can't mess it up i can't eat after 8 p.m right and that's what you guys have to realize is rules are not just about a certain food it's like literally how we live and lead our life so it's definitely a cause of why you're thinking about food because ultimately like at the end of the day if you're you know you're thinking about food it's coming from the rules and restrictions it's coming from you know potentially we're not we don't love our bodies in the way that we are so we're constantly trying to diet and we're constantly trying to change them and then also if we're actually not eating enough it's like of course we're going to be thinking about food all the time There's a fair bit of research in this area and a study in the International Journal of Eating Disorders found that individuals who dieted were significantly more likely to experience food related thoughts and cravings. This suggests a strong link between dietary restriction and increased food preoccupation. And it makes complete sense. It truly does. So how the hell do we break this cycle? How do we stop the food noise and how do we stop thinking about food all the time? So of course we know now why it's happening. So restriction, mental restriction, not giving our body enough nutrients, and then of course diet culture. So what do we have to do? We have to address all of those pillars. For some people, it might only be one. For some people, it might be you've got to address all four. And that's why it's really, really important that you guys are getting a personalized plan for you to really understand what you need to work on in order to get rid of it. So I've For most of my clients, we're working on all of them for them to really let go of the food noise and building trust with their body again. So of course, number one is you need balance in nutrition. You need to start giving your body enough energy, especially if you're very active. And I hear it all the time. It's like females are coming to me and they're like, oh my God, like I'm eating like 1800 calories. There's no way I could eat in the 2000s. Like I'll just gain weight. But like these ladies are coming to me and they're working out, you know, work doing weights four times a week. They're doing cardio five, six times a week. They're getting 10,000 steps in and they're questioning why they're like thinking about food all the time. I'm like, yeah, because you're not eating enough for the amount of exercise that you're doing. I remember reading one of my clients sending me a message and she was like, holy shit, Laura, like I can't believe I'm eating 2,200 calories and not gaining weight. I'm like, yeah, and I get it because it's like because we've got so much influence on the calorie deficit, like people don't know how to sit at maintenance calories. People probably don't even know what maintenance calories is, right? So that's why it's really, really important that you understand nutritional phases and how to actually fuel your body correctly if you want to start getting rid of this food noise and fueling your body correctly. We have to look at, of course, you need your macros, you need your total calories but then you also need to be looking at like regular meals eating frequently throughout the day like if you're someone who's having a black coffee for breakfast because you're saving calories then i'm talking to you because a black coffee and especially if you're exercising in the morning then you absolutely need to be making sure that you're fueling adequately right because eating regular balanced meals helps stabilize blood sugar levels and it prevents extreme hunger which can then of course lead to overeating Then, of course, 
we need to look at the mental restriction side of stuff. So what you guys need to do is you need to build a healthy relationship with food. Why? Because you're not going to get anywhere if you continue to shame yourself or judge yourself with everything you do. And of course, if we are listening to all our head noise, we're listening to the rules, the restrictions. I can't eat this food because that's got too many calories. I'm being good today. I have to be clean. I have to do this perfectly. I can't have these cookies because I have these cookies. I'm going to lose control, right? It's all these mental restrictions that's actually stopping you from reaching your body composition goals. Why? Because it's the reason why people are losing control, overeating, having all of this anxiety, getting up in their heads, making it mean that they're not getting anywhere, and the you know the battle goes on. And then we fall into these fuck it mentalities. We're like, what's the point? I'm putting in all this effort, but we have nothing to show for it. So that's why like it's so so important to be really building trust with yourself and really learning how to you know stop listening to the head noise and start trusting and listening to your body. It's so so important. Something else I want to speak to, and I know not many people are talking about it, and I truly believe it is, you know, in order to break really free from food noise and your relationship with food, I honestly believe you have to look deeper and what's causing your relationship with food. And more often than not, your relationship with food is stemming from your relationship with your body. If you are still someone that is self-shaming, has so much negative self-talk, you feel like you're never good enough no matter how much weight you lose. If you lose weight and you still have negative things to say about your body, then if you're having regular bad body image days, then you know no matter how much weight you lose, that's not going to fix the issue because the issue is actually an internal thing. The issue is that you have so much worth and value tied to your body needing to look a certain way. Maybe that's you know being thin, maybe it's being slim, maybe it's being fit, or maybe it's being toned. And why I talk about this is because if you have so much emotional attachment to your body needing to look a certain way, when you get triggered and your body isn't that, then that is going to send you into a spiral. Then it can turn into, oh my God, I'm so fat. I'm, you know, what I'm doing isn't working. So then your go-to pattern can be run back to a calorie deficit, run back into adding extra cardio, or you can go the other way and you can say completely fuck it and just eat whatever you want. It's like, what's the point? I'm putting in all this effort and I'm not seeing the result I want anyway. But here's the thing. You are seeing the result. It's your mindset that's making you believe that you're not because you've got so much attachment to it needing to be a certain way. And that's why I am such a big advocate on working on healing your relationship with yourself starting with self-acceptance accepting who you are and working on loving who you are not what you are because that shift within itself is the gateway to being consistent which is the key to changing your body composition of course shifting through nutritional phases of course you know having your nutrition exercise on point as well however if you do something for six or nine months and then like you still feel like you're not getting anywhere because of the emotional attachment pattern and then that's the point where you want to give up then of course you're not going to get anywhere because you're jumping ship and you haven't given yourself enough time i always like to go back to alex amosi's example in this and he's like yeah People don't get the results they want because they're not willing to play the long-term game. They're like, yeah, I want, you know, a 12-week thing. I want it fixed in X amount of time. But he had such wise words. He's like, when I start anything, I'm signing up for 10 years. And because at the end of the day, that's what it truly does take. It takes time, it takes commitment, and it takes discipline. But if we are constantly on these roller coasters of, you know, not being enough and wanting to change things and feeling like we're failing and we ultimately self-sabotage, then of course we're not going to get anywhere. And then if your pattern is food, right, if then you, you know, you utilize food as your emotional coping self-soothing mechanism, then of course... It's a dieting cycle of doom, honestly. (laughs) And I wish more people actually understood this and realized this um, because it changes so much for so many people. And like, it's one of my biggest pleasures in my job of when women finally realize that they, 
you know, they were attaching so much worth and value to their body and to the number of the scale. And for them to really release that, because then nutrition and exercise becomes fun again. Like losing weight becomes simple because there's no more this emotional attachment because it's no longer something that they need. They're actually doing it from a place of love and support about their bodies. So like if you can't stick to something, you know, you're feeling emotional, you've got these triggers, then this is something you should absolutely be looking at because it could be the reason why you are cock blocking yourself as well. And that's, of course, why the fourth pillar inside the Fit and Free Academy is all about building a healthy relationship with yourself and really being able to detach your worth and your value from the size and what you look like. And we really learn how to love and accept ourselves for who we are, which is really a powerful thing. And the last thing that I really want to, like, in all of that, another thing that goes hand in hand with that is really focusing on our emotional regulation and really implementing tools to really help us calm down our nervous system. Because, like, at the end of the day, food noise comes with a lot of anxiety and a lot of emotion in the body. And if we don't have the tools and the resources to calm the emotion down, then we are, you know, it's going to be hard to be able to stop listening to the food noise and actually start listening to our body. So I think also just speaking to that a little bit and really implementing like nervous system regulation tools, like at the end of the day, fat loss, weight loss, whatever, toning, like you, it can't happen when your body is in such a stressed state and this is why it's so important to practice nervous system regulation tools like i've noticed a big shift within myself in the times when i'm really taking care of this like ticking this box in my life so like when i was back in oz i was regularly doing a sauna twice a week i am now doing an ice bath and a sauna and i have gone back to my journal and like honestly just having these practices to for me to be able to calm my mind calm my nervous system regulate myself so that i can ultimately you know handle more emotional things throughout my life um which absolutely feeds back into your relationship with food and the food noise so they're the things that you really really have to work on it's not just like a meal plan fix it's also it's a holistic approach because at the end of the day like i said food noise is not just from one thing food noise can be from multiple tutor reasons and that's why i'm such a big advocate of you know health is wealth health is like you know from our mind body and our soul and it's so important to be looking at all areas of our life I was sitting on social media and I was scrolling through and I saw this post by Manifestation Babe and she's quite a really well-known influencer and she does a lot of um, teachings in and around manifestation. I love her podcast. It's really good. Um, But she made a post in and around her own weight loss journey and it was so interesting to me reading through that because like it's just like finally someone is talking about the actual real things that people need to do in order to lose weight so it was from the point of view of her own journey and you know she was struggling a lot with um losing weight and you know struggling with food noise struggling with you know not being comfortable in her body she talks openly about how she was really uncomfortable like taking pictures of herself through this time and just you know so really was struggling with all of it and it was a really beautiful to read through all of the things that she said that helped her and i just wanted to point out a couple of them so the first the second one that she said was stopped restricting herself stopped restricting dieting and started listening to her hunger and fullness cues and starting to trust her body again the second thing that she did was a self-image upgrade to the max fully accepting her body as it is she said that she struggled and so many women do i struggled myself for a really long time to accept my body and she had to learn how to let go of self-criticism and turned in hard into her inner child and made her the center of her own world then the next thing that she said was nervous system regulation she was struggling with turning to food when she was feeling emotional so she had to work on learning how to regulate herself without leaning on food to cope with her difficult emotions And then the last thing that she said was nervous system regulation. So she said that fat loss can't happen in a stressful state. So she was using things like hypnosis, breath works, 
valgus nerve stimulation, magnesium baths, no screens before bed, and hitting eight hours sleep as a minimum, right? And this is the thing, guys, right? Like food noise hand in hand goes with wanting to loop, change your body. Like I absolutely get that. But like there is your evidence of the things that actually work. They're working for people. And, you know, we think it's these crash diets, these strict meal plans, these calorie deficits, all the things to change your body. But this is what it actually takes. (laughs) But like how well has that really worked out for you? We can take it from my clients. We can take it from manifestation, babe. But this stuff is really so important and no one is really listening or paying attention to it. So I really hope this episode has helped you guys. I would love to know what your aha moment was. And like always, continue to reach out, send me the DMs because I love talking to you guys. To wrap up this episode, again, if you haven't written a review yet, I would love to see it if you could just take the time. But like always, thank you for being here and I will be in your ears next week. Bye. The number one challenge that all my clients face before we start working together is a lack of clarity on how much and what to eat to lose weight. Often they are making two huge mistakes constantly trying to skip meals or eat under 1600 calories. Secondly, only allowing themselves bad foods like chocolate on the weekend, but end up binging all to tell themselves they're going to start again on Monday. If you feel like you have tried every diet under the sun and still can't figure out what to eat to achieve your weight loss goals, take my free two minute quiz. You can find the link in the show notes down below and it will help you figure out exactly what you're doing wrong with your nutrition and exercise and exactly what to do to fix it so that you can finally be confident in your body and achieve your weight loss goals.